light is necessary for human civilization to function. I mean, you need light in order to do things. And the advent of artificial lighting has given us the ability to do things and make wonderful things 24 hours a day. It has extended human capability. However, that comes at a cost. Most people live in a place where they can't actually go out and see the night sky in its natural, pristine state. And the question that constantly came up was, where can I go to view the night sky? Uh, if I you know, go out in my backyard, there's too many lights around. I can't see anything. If I go to a park at night, they're going to kick me out because the park closes at dark. Uh, if I try to sneak on some farmer's property, uh, they're not going to be too happy about that. And so this was a response to that question. Where can I go to view the night sky? Ohio has two famous people that are associated with major events in the history of NASA. One of them was the first human being to set foot on another celestial body. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And the other one was the uh, first uh, American to orbit the Earth, John Glenn. After he uh, retired from the astronaut space corps, he went into uh, the U.S. Senate. And one of his major legislative agendas was to foster science, technology, education, and that type of thing. A few years before his death, he was approached and asked if he would like to have his name on a project that was dedicated to sharing the night sky, to sharing a love of science with the general public, and he said he would be happy to do it. The John Glenn Astronomy Park is a place for people to come and view the night sky on their own or at our regular Friday and Saturday night programs. We are in one of the busiest state parks in the country. Uh, the Hocking Hills State Park gets five million visitors per year on average. It's within a three hours drive of something like 10 or 15 million people. I ask people at the astronomy park during the programs, how many of you have never seen the Milky Way before? And most people raise their hands. I mean, it's, it's pretty extraordinary. If you live out in north central Nevada, Every, every night is going to be spectacular and beautiful. In Ohio, you're not going to find too many places. There's a lot more cities and that kind of thing. And so putting this in Ohio in a place that happens to be uniquely dark uh, has been pretty important. The layout of the place was designed to solve a number of problems and also to inspire people about the night sky. We need the ability to adapt to the dark to be able to see the stars. We need some place where there are no street lights. So the very first feature of the park was a wall to block off the light of the cars coming up the driveway. The plaza itself is a place that people observe. I wanted the plaza to have some sort of commemoration of astronomical concepts. In Ohio, the people that built the mounds that we're familiar with in Lancaster, down in Chillicothe, we call them the, the Hopewell, the Adena, the Fort Ancient People. They created great big mounds of dirt, and very often those great big mounds of dirt pointed at certain locations along the horizon. For example, uh, where the sun would rise uh, on the summer solstice, where the sun would set on the winter solstice. So our plaza has six slots built into the perimeter, which catch the rising and the setting sun on the first day of every season, on those important days. And that's in commemoration of the people that did that before us. If you stand at the right spot in the very center of our plaza and look through a little ball that we have set into the plaza and look at the top of the flagpole, that points to the North Celestial Pole. That's the part of the sky around which everything seems to rotate. We also have a sundial. The sundial does not have the little stick that casts the shadow. You yourself are the stick. And in order to make it more accurate, you move into different positions according to uh, little markers on the sundial. And it's actually very, very accurate. It can get to within about 10 minutes.
We have an assortment of telescopes that we use at the Astronomy Park. A few of them we actually use here inside of the observatory. They stay put, and in order to make them able to see the night sky, we roll the roof of the observatory off. Several of them we take out into the plaza to show people uh, views of the planets and, and, and the stars. People come here, the telescope in this observatory, I call it the wow telescope because people look through it and you know, 20, 30 times a night I hear, wow, it's amazing. And you know, it gets their heart rate up and that person will then become passionate and interested in, in science. Science is a very important part of our life. In order for people to become good at science, they have to have a passion for it. They have to have something that drives them to do it. And I think the night sky is one of those things that gives people a passion for science. It's simply thrilling in and of itself. People for thousands of years have put their stories into the night sky. They've had a relationship with the night sky. And so this place gives people a chance to be inspired and take that forward and hopefully be able to make our world a better place.